guys, welcome back to another video. So normally, I'm a little more excited about starting a video, but this video I've been kind of pushing off for like a week, a week and a half now, just because you can probably tell by the title of the video and by that little bit of video in the intro, I blew up the diff in the Turbo Miata. So I'm actually kind of shocked about it because this, this diff's actually lasted me a while. I bought it probably two and a half years ago and slapped it in this car. I have no idea the condition. It was welded when I got it, and I bought it for 100 bucks. So I really can't complain, but now that I'm looking at diff prices online, they've gone up in value a ton since I've been buying parts for the Miatas and stuff like that, at least actually when I built this car. So I don't really like that, so it is what it is. Got to get diff slapped in it. But it was just kind of stupid because it kind of caught it, but I was just never looking. Normally I do my fluid check, like check the oil, check the coolant. But I never really look under the car, and I was really noticing after it blew up, walking up the driveway, that there's a big puddle of gear fluid underneath the diff. So I'm pretty sure that one of the seals on the axle ended up going bad. I think it's on the driver's side. It just started leaking. There's a pretty good sized puddle of gear fluid under there. You probably probably see it later in the video, but I'm pretty sure it just leaked out all the fluid. I literally got probably 0.3 miles from my house and pulled onto a main road. Saw a car coming up pretty quick on me, so I slapped in, went from first to second, and just gave it a little gas and just went boom, and just started making that carnage noise. So it wasn't fun, but at least I was able to kind of put it home and get it in the garage, so now we can start working on it, and then kind of just push it off from there, as you can tell, because my last two videos, I was working on the MB Miata, building a headlight intake for that. So if you've seen that, I suggest you go back, or go and watch that, because that was pretty cool and it was a pretty quick little project so any MB guys want to build a headlight intake and I also was working on the mini bike too just because that was something fun and then if anything if I get pissed off working on this thing I can at least go rip that thing around but today we're gonna at least get the diff dropped out of this thing so I'm gonna jack it up probably pull off the bumper just because the lip ends up touching the ground and get the bag jacked up assess everything see what we need to do to get it dropped out and I'm supposed to have a do come drop a new 1.6 or new to me 1.6 diff off to me later tonight hopefully for a pretty good deal so shout out to that dude we'll see if he comes through but I want to get that diff in then I can at least get it cleaned up and then I'm gonna have to take it to a local welder get it welded up so then we can get it slapped back into the drift car because it's got a welded diff right now Gotta have a little diff to begin with. <laughs> and I'm actually surprised on how long this diff lasted because if it blew up that easy, I'm surprised how long it lasted on the drift time, or the drift video we just did a couple, like two months ago, where I was beating the hell out of this thing. I drove it an hour out there, beat the crap out of it for three hours, and drove it home without a single issue. So I couldn't be more than happy with how that diff held up, but it is what it is. You just you break shit and you fix it, but now I'm probably gonna start sourcing some 1.6 diffs just to have as spares and get them welded up on the side, just because I know it's probably prone to happening again. This is my second one, so I'm probably prone to blowing up a third or fourth. And I was looking into doing the 1.8 swap since this is a 1.6 car. It has a 1.6 diff set up in it. I was considering doing the 1.8 swap, but a lot of guys are kind of racking up what they're actually worth, to me at least and you gotta swap the drive shaft, diff, and axles, and that can range from 1,000 to 1,500 bucks, depending on who you're getting it from. You might be able to get a good deal for super cheap, so I give it to you guys that can find good deals or find a parts car, and you can be able to yank it out, but for the whole setup I would wanna do, it'll cost me a pretty penny, so I'd rather just wait until the future, got a little bit more bread, and then I can actually toss it into this car and put a nice diff in it. I was looking into doing the R7 diff, swap into it so that might be something in the future but I'm gonna stop talking because I didn't think I've been talking for like four minutes now so I'm gonna get to work jacking up the car pull the bumper off and I'll probably show you guys spinning the wheels over just so you guys can hear the diff kind of clinking around in there I can definitely know it's a diff because the drive shaft ain't spinning I thought it was a tranny I might put that clip in there but in the beginning of that video once I blew it up I instantly pulled my phone out and started filming I thought it was a tranny at first because it was second and it like popped itself out of gear and the whole car kind of freaked out. So I really thought it was a trans, but then I dropped it in gear. It drove home, I had all gears other than that. And seems to be fine now. So once just spinning the wheels over, you can hear it clanking around in there. So I'll show you guys in a little bit, but enough jibber jabber. Let's get to work on this thing and 
see what happened. Got the Miata jacked up, pulled off the front bumper. Don't worry, I got the front wheels chalked super tight, so it shouldn't roll anywhere or have any issues. And I got this thing jacked up, so I wanted to kind of show you guys. You can see all the gear fluid down there. It's pretty much all over the place, so I gotta clean that up before I can even work on it. But now I got it up in the air, let's see if I can set you guys up. Let you guys hear this diff. Yeah, she don't sound, she don't sound too hot. <laughs> so I'm kind of glad it's a diff because I've done this previously. So I kind of know what to do. It's just not really a fun job to do it. Pulling the axles, dropping the drive shaft, and then pulling out all the bolts that actually mount the diff. And sometimes they can be a bitch. So I'll cross my fingers and then scrape through my bolts. And so far they're looking pretty good since I'm, this car's not really that low, but it's still kind of low, so I do have a little bit of scrapes here and there. But other than that, the dude texted me that he's like 30 minutes out for the diff, so I should begin that here pretty soon. So I'm actually going to start unbolting everything, see if we can get this diff dropped out of here tonight, see what we can do. I am going to jack it up this way with the jack stands right here under the frame mount. So if anyone's asking, I think it should be all right. It's my first time doing it, but I dropped it down already and shook the car really good, and it seems to be solid, so it's still touching the wood with the tires so it still has a little bit of friction from the tires and all that so i think it should be more than all right but let's get to work getting that diff dropped out of there all right i just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update so i was just working away cracking all the bolts on the axles loose and then the dude with the diff actually ended up showing up so i got the diff so we are ready to go so now sometime this week i think either tomorrow or wednesday because today is currently monday i'm gonna get this diff cleaned up and then get it up to a local welder so we can get that all welded up and get it ready to drop into this car and i actually want to take apart this diff because i was just talking to the dude and he thinks i broke the welds inside the diff which i was actually thinking about too but just because this thing just doesn't sound right spinning around last time i broke my diff it was like trying to lock up the whole car and it was super hard to move this one still spins it just has a little bit of clinking inside of there it's like a piece of metal is kind of stuck in there just kind of flying around so it might be something hey if i can fix it then cool i got a spare and i might just end up picking another spare just so i got a couple spares lying around here and if anything they're worth super good money according to him so pretty happy about that so can't really complain so um, i'm gonna finish up getting the actual dropped out of it start dropping the drive shaft and then we gotta start working on the, all the diff mount bolts Get the fuck off! What the fuck? Jesus fucking hell! Fucking easiest thing fucking doesn't want to come out! Give me it! Fuck it! Give me it! There is no reason why you should be fucking connected! What's up guys? So it's the next day now. I probably put a little clip of it from last night. I was trying to get a clip of me just pulling the diff right out, but for some reason, the drive shaft just gave me the biggest fight ever. The thing was like rusted, like kind of welded to the diff itself, and I really didn't want to pull it out of the trans because then I would have to top up the trans fluid and just make this job so much harder than it needs to be. And after about an hour of fighting it, screaming, yelling, cussing, doing whatever, I finally just took a screwdriver in there, hammered the hell out of it, eventually got a little gap into it and just kept prying at it and got it to pop free and finally got the diff out and just yanked it out and pulled it a night after that because I was just so pissed off. So got the old diff pulled out. I ended up digging out the first diff I ever blew up too just because I know I need to steal the stubs off of it and a couple little spacers to space it all apart. But got the old diff pulled out so now we can finally take that apart and see what happened on the inside. And I'm also going to start working on the new diff so we can get this skull cleaned up, light it on fire, do all that so I can get it dropped off tomorrow and get it welded up. I think I'm going to start working on this first just to make sure I can get this done for tomorrow. And then later on, we'll open up that diff, see how bad the carnage is. Hopefully I can save it. That would be super nice. And then I'm just going to steal a couple parts from that so I can swap it onto this one. But other than that, this diff looks pretty solid. Dude dropped it off, seemed like a solid dude. Everything spins over. He sent me pictures of what the inside looks like. Everything looks good. So I think this diff should be more than solid to get it welded up and send her in the car. I'm not really rushing to put like any mounts or anything in it because I'm more than bound to 
blowing it up again so I'm not really worried if anything I'd rather have the stock bushing so it at least gives a little bit of give into it so it's not at like straight solid mounts everywhere and it's just sending all the power straight to the gears itself it kind of has a little bit of flex in it so that's kind of my idea behind it so I'm gonna start working on the new diff getting this thing all pulled apart and then we can start cleaning it up get it ready to weld and hopefully have enough time after that to open up that boy boy because I'm really curious on what the look inside of that thing looks like so let's get to work on this get the fluid drained out and get it all pulled apart probably should have filmed it but ended up pulling apart the diff real quick and everything's looking good so far so got the housing right there and then i got the little baby diff in this tire this thing is tiny no wonder i keep breaking it that's the size of my hand right there so i'm not really surprised why i keep breaking these little things for putting 300 horsepower through it but everything else looks good in there so we should be good to go get all this thing cleaned up Light her on fire, let burn off all the fluid in there, so should be good to weld tomorrow and drop that thing off. But other than that, I probably will film me taking apart the other one just because I want to see my reaction with all the carnage inside because it seems like I broke the weld in there. So if I broke the weld, it might be salvageable, but it also could be destroyed. I might be able to show you my old one. So this is my first diff I blew up. This one was real bad. Can hear that inside of there so I'm pretty sure I definitely broke the ring gear in this one but we'll see later because I actually have a dude that's gonna come over and, and steal this casing right here for a good deal so that'll at least recoup me some money from buying the new diff there so and then I actually pay for getting this thing welded up so other than that I'm gonna get this thing all cleaned up and then he should probably be here in a little bit to start taking that thing apart and we'll see the carnage on my first diff and then we'll also see the carnage on my second diff I blew up kind of wanted to show you guys because been kind of fun. I've just been sitting here just lighting this thing on fire. Break hanging it down real good. A little bit more. There it goes. I'll burn my hand. And just let it reach. Just trying to burn out all that old gear fluid. Get those gears all cleaned out. Don't have any issues welding it tomorrow. All right, so I got the old diff all cleaned up, so that it's all looking good. Even wiped down the housing just to make sure no more diff fluid everywhere. Just so I can put that back in there just to store it until tomorrow. And then I'm gonna drop it off tomorrow, get her welded up. So that should go pretty smooth. So now that I got some free time, I'm still waiting for this dude to come get the casing. I think I'm gonna open up the one that blew up recently and then see what that thing's looking like because I'm really hoping that thing's salvageable. Kind of crossed my fingers on that, but I kind of got like a 75 25 chance, like 75% chance that that thing's fucked. But either way, I can sell for some parts. So let me get that thing put up on the bucket and we can drain all the fluid out and then take a peek at what it looks like inside. So I just pulled the drain plug out and that's what she's looking like. So I don't think we're looking too hot on this one. So I'm gonna drain the fluid out, get both the stubs pulled out, and then pull off the diff, and then we can take a further look at it and see where that came from. <laughs> oh my God, I gotta show you guys this. So I was literally just took that last clip. I flipped the diff upside down and I heard something fall in the bucket. So I got my magnet out. Oh no. That is definitely a spider gear right there. <laughs> oh, we are definitely not looking too hot about this one, but I am still curious on what it looks like inside because if that's just a spider gear, she might still be weldable depending on what the ring opinion looks like in there. So, all right, now I can finally start pulling this thing apart. Been working, getting the diff all tore apart, and it's finally time to open this baby up. I just cracked it enough to kind of be able to lift it up off. I'm not even sure if I broke all the seal yet, but... Let's pull her off and see how bad she looks. So I'm gonna get you guys set up. Lead right there. All right. Let's see how she's looking. Oh boy, there's some metal in there. <laughs> oh my God, who welded this thing? Oh, no wonder it broke. Oh boy. Oh boy. Can't wait to show you guys this thing. Let me do it propped up enough. Oh, I'm gonna have to get a light. Give me a second. 
Where's my light at? All right, so I'll show you guys inside the casing so you can see where the drain plug is There's another nice piece of metal in there and this thing is just full of metal pretty much everywhere Which sucks because she ain't looking too hot and I don't want to know who welded this thing Because they literally just put like a little bead on the top gear And that's it That's literally it. They welded this thing with like a Harbor Freight welder these welds look worse than mine. I ain't no welder. Oh boy, this thing's gonna be fun. All I can see right now is this, this ring and pinion definitely got eaten up a good bit. It might be salvageable. Oh no, nope, there's a chip out of it right there. I'm gonna have to spin this thing around a little bit. Let me see if I can. Oh, I can. Nice. Alright, we got another chip taken out. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see that chip right there. Oh, this thing's like a lot. It will not spin forward now. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it has like a free spot. That's, that's great. To be honest, I don't know what broke. It looks like maybe just the ring and pinion gave out. That's what it's looking like. Oh man, I'm not even looking at the inside gear. I'm gonna show you guys that. Some light in there. So, you know, you guys can kind of see that. Oh man, that thing. That thing's definitely. Look at that. It's, this thing's free spinning. Look at that. Oh my god. The diff's are like neutral. Holy cow. That. Oh my god. Oh my god, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that pinion gear, holy cow, it's missing all of the teeth right there. Oh man, that's great. Well, I'll give it to the dude that welded it then. His welds held up. The diff itself did not. I'm surprised this thing drove home. Because <laughs> if I would have got caught in just that little second section that was like neutral, Oh, like right here. If I already got caught right there, I would have been screwed. Because then the thing would have just been spinning. But damn, that sucks. Alright, well. I don't think this thing's going to be salvageable. But I'm going to talk to a few people and see what they think. Maybe I can pick up a new ring and pinion gear. And then maybe salvage this. Like just get a new main gear and then the new gear down in there. And it might be something worth it. But at least I know these casings are worth a good amount of money. And those stubs are worth a good amount of money too, but at least I'm gonna keep the stubs just cause I need those for the new diff. But other than that, it is what it is. What's up guys? So I'm not really too sure where I left off last, but I did take the diff and get her dropped off to get welded up and I just picked that up earlier today. So this is how she's looking. So she's got all the corners of the spider gears all welded together. So should be more than solid. If anything, I'm gonna break that pinion gear again before I even break any of these welds. So while that was up at the welder, I ended up just painting up the cross member or like the back, back casing with the mounts on it just to get this a little bit prettier, especially since you can see it from the back of the car. I thought why not make it look a little bit nicer, especially since I got some downtime in between swapping the new diff in and out. So I'll show you guys a little before and after of this. Other than that, now that this thing's all painted up, we can finally get her sealed up onto the diff there. I just gotta do a little bit more cleaning out, make sure there's no slag in any of these gears there, and just make sure this thing is nice and clean, and then we can finally lay a nice bead of RTV, get her sealed up on the case, and then once it's sealed up, I might consider painting the front of the diff, just cause 
it is pretty rusty and looks pretty gross and I know it would just be a pain to kind of mask off this because I know I for sure would still get paint in it because it doesn't masking tape does not like to really stick to any of this especially once it's got some oil on it it does not stick for it dog shit so if anything I'm gonna get this mounted up to the casing and then I can just kind of bag off the casing mask it off in there and then just lay a quick coat of black paint on this just to make it look a little bit nicer and then the new diff should be looking real nice to get dropped back into the NA Miata we should be good to go and rip this bitch around. Got a fresh coat of paint on the front part of the diff here. Ended up just holding a piece of cardboard and kind of spraying around. So it was a little overspray on the top and bottom, but it is all right. So now that this thing's painted up, she's finally 100% ready to go, get dropped back into the car. The only thing is it is currently Thursday and this video comes out on Friday. So I got to get all this swapped over, edited for you guys so I can post it tomorrow. So I think I'm going to end up just filming it for Monday's video and then on Monday or at least this weekend I can do some testing on it maybe drift it around do a couple burnouts make sure the diff's 100% solid and then she should be pretty much good to go to start drifting here or taking it out to end the pad again or what so so other than that the diff is still a little wet so it's kind of good because it lets it fully cure I ended up just swapping in the actual stubs and the little spacers real quick just so this thing's all completely 100% ready it's got to throw some fluid in it so other than that Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, blowing up the diff in the Turbo Miata. I know it's not fun, but I had to rip it out and then get a whole new one built up on the side. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content, and peace out.